Hey everybody, Anthony here, SpecialtyMotorCars.net up here in Pelham, New Hampshire. Uh, I have a different video to make for you today. Uh, this is a, a Marriott or divorce it type of thing. This is a uh, Hoovy's Garage type of hoopty we'll go with. And I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a, a preview. I'm gonna show you this car and I'm gonna let you know what doesn't make the cut here at Specialty Motor Cars. Everybody knows me for chasing down and looking for a really clean, low mileage, pretty town cars, Cadillacs, Buicks, the full size stuff, just like the town car behind me. But this one, even though it's got low mileage, 77,000, it was a Florida car, no rust on the car, and it's pretty as pretty can be, red with a white top. Uh, it just didn't make the cut. So what doesn't make the cut? What makes me want to divorce this car? Or you tell me, what should I do? Should I marry it? Should I invest a ton of money into fixing all the little things that bug the hell out of me, but might not bug the heck out of the next person? Or do I cut it loose, divorce it, send it down the road for short, short money, and let somebody tinker on it and have an affordable town car at the end of the day for them to own and enjoy. So without further ado, I'm gonna show you this car and you let me know what you think I should do with this Lincoln Town Car. All right, here it is, the 1994 Lincoln Town Car. This is a signature series town car, finishing a beautiful burgundy, maybe a Cabernet red wine color. It's a really gorgeous color. And you can probably see even 15 seconds into the video here of why I fell in love with this car. The beautiful white presidential top, the burgundy paint, lower two-tone is a like a plum color. It's just a really pretty car. The car came out of Florida, so it's a rust-free example. And this is right up my alley. This is a specialty motor car car. Unfortunately, just like most of my cars I buy, I buy them sight unseen. I don't see them beforehand, usually just in pictures, um, but usually detailed pictures. This car didn't really have detailed pictures. It was pretty. It's kind of like a Tinder car, we'll say. Uh, it was online, it showed pretty in a few pictures. And then when I went on my first date, it just didn't work out. So I'm gonna show you this town car and I'm gonna show you what doesn't make this town car a specialty motor car car and why this one is a divorce it or marry it type of car. With everything comes age, comes a little bit of wear and tear. And this car, you can kind of already see the wear and tear on it. You can see all the chrome on the bumpers here starting to flake off. You can see a little bit of a fish bowl going on inside the headlight there. So normally I'd put new headlights in it, shine them up. Obviously I love white walls and a car without white walls is not a car to me. I need to put four new tires on this car just to have a match set. But the front tires are actually really good. Someone just replaced these tires, Hankooks. Unfortunately, they didn't put Hankook white walls on it. So to me, it looks silly. Paint's in nice shape. It's a little dull in a few spots. Has some marks on the tops of the fenders and stuff like that. But I know with a really good buff and polish, this car would come back. Uh, needs a rear window regulator. Not a lot of money, maybe 30 to $40 for a regulator but unfortunately a pain in the butt to do. I do them all the time. It's just another thing to add to it. Power antenna works sometimes. It actually does pull down sometimes, but that's intermittent. And then you can see here on the back bumper, paint chipping. So I'd have to get the bumper refinished. It has a tear down here in the bottom. You know, it's, it's all chipped up. It, it looks like it was painted once and just not prepped right and then banged up and beat up. You can especially see it right here on this side. I've never seen something like that before. It's like the chrome's coming off the taillight. But you know what? It's not bad. It's, it's not a horrible. There's worse cars cracking the taillight here. The vinyl top is actually in really nice shape. White vinyl top. The stitching is still there. Could use a good scrubbing. It's got the presidential town sedan emblems. A little black mark there. I think a magic eraser would take that off. The color really wows me on this car. But unfortunately, it just doesn't make the cut for me to see investing a ton of money into. You can see the cloudy headlights. Little scrape on this bumper. Now, some stuff is acceptable. Some stuff is fixable. But when you get to stuff like this, this doozy of a dent on the top of the fender, you got another ding there. 
stuff like that. We're missing a center cap on this side. It's got the locking lug nuts. Surprisingly, I do have the lug tool for it. You can see here, it looks like this molding caught the edge of the fender at one point, got a little wrinkled up. It's got some scrapes and scars, you know, going down little chips here and there. And this ugly guy, it is missing one of the presidential emblems. I don't know if that fell off during the impeachment or what, not entirely sure. A couple little dings and dents on the quarter panels. This tire over here, it's an older tiger paw, needs to be replaced. It's got a little bit of brake dust buildup on the wheels, but you can see how rust free this car is. It's really clean. The frame is still nice and black. The car came out of Florida, it was a Florida car. Uh, so that's what really, you know, married me to wanting to buy this car was the fact that it was a Florida car. You know, I know it was a clean car. That's what I like. Open it up. It only gets a little worse from here on, folks. So bear with me. We got a couple missing caps. Not a big deal. I have some of those. I don't know if I have red ones, but I definitely have some. We'll start it up here. She runs great. I put over 100 miles on this car and uh, I've enjoyed well, mostly enjoyed. The weird thing was when I picked this car up was it had a bowling ball in the trunk. And I didn't know that when I started driving it. And I'm driving it down the road. And all I can hear is this thing banging around with even the slightest turn. Well, I got to my destination only to find there was a bowling ball in the trunk. So you can see here, 77,000 miles. The anti-lock brake light is on. That stays on constantly. The airbag light is on and it's flashing. I already know what that is. It's the airbag module behind the glove box, which is actually kind of common lately. I've been getting a few town cars that have had this problem. These modules have a built-in fuse and those built-in fuses after a while, if someone shorts something out, uh, they burn out and they're not serviceable. So in this case, that fuse is no good and that unit has to be replaced. You can get them on eBay for about a hundred bucks. A couple more missing clips. Again, you can see this taped up window this guy just flapping in the breeze. The leather's really tough on this car though. You know, the back seat, it's not ripped up or torn up, but you can see the, the color loss, the cracking. I think this car lived its life in Florida, was a pretty nice car in Florida. Then it came up here. I think maybe someone inherited the car, got grandma's old Lincoln and just drove the hell out of it. And unfortunately wasn't all that nice to it. No, it's not horrible, but it's just not something that I'm overly in, in love with. And unfortunately, some of this stuff you just can't fix. Uh, so this car, you know, you, you gotta make up your mind. Do you marry it? Do you invest money into stuff like this? And then still have a car that has a, a big ding on the top of the fender and, and stuff like that. The leather showing a little bit of wear. This seat's not too bad. Um, it, uh, it, it shows well on this side. It's not a horrible car all around. It's a very pretty looking car. So that brings me, what do I do? Do you fix it? Do you sell it? Uh, do you marry it? Do you get in love with it and go on a honeymoon? You know, I remember when I was in high school that everybody has to go to the prom. Whether you're pretty or ugly, everybody's gotta go to the prom and have a good time. This car, this is one of those prom dates that needs a little bit of love but she's a solid car, uh, 77,000 miles. You know, it is what it is type of situation. Now I'm gonna put it in drive here. We're gonna take it for a spin. All right, here we are. Now, another thing that I know this car needs without me even diagnosing it is, you can hear that banging around. It needs four shocks. There's no question this car needs shocks. Now somebody put in the back of this car coil springs did a coil spring conversion on the suspension, and that's great. No sagging, that's all set. But unfortunately, never put shocks in it. It needs four shocks, because this thing is bouncier and squishier than the SS Minnow about ready to sink. A couple other things that I noticed that aren't horrible, but need to be repaired. As you can see, the climate control cluster here doesn't light up, it doesn't actuate. The radio does work. And she, she pulls down the road pretty good. I'm really actually impressed. I drove this car back on the highway. I was really impressed with how nice the car ran and drove. Um, you know, no pulsation or anything like that, but she needs a little bit of front end work.
needs a little bit of love. It's got a squeaky ball joint over here. It's got, uh, like I said, four shocks that need to be replaced. Pull that guy out. That guy's all jammed up. Another thing that's kind of crazy, that <laughs> the stop for the glove box is broken. So she just pops right open. Now I did clean this car up. I did my best to do that uh, without going too crazy on it. But I want to show you what it looks like under the hood, the 4.6. And then also inside the trunk. And here's that big mean 4.6 liter. You can see how clean it is. I mean, presentable wise. Rust is very minimal. This car lived most of its life in Florida. And then it came up here to New England. You know, so all the components under here are in pretty good shape. I'm gonna come back in the trunk here and show you what it looks like back here. Not bad, a little stain that can be cleaned up. Uh, get some pieces hanging off here. I think that's for the cell phone. Not entirely sure. Um, like I said before about the power antenna, that works sometimes. Power trunk pull down does work. You know, she's an all right car. I actually took a little bit of time and polished the top side of this quarter. And you can see how nice the paint actually is on there. So with a little bit of love, she could come a long way. But let me know what you think down below. I know this isn't the typical town car I normally offer, but tell me what you think. Is she a marry and take good care of her and find her a new home? Or do I divorce it, kick it to the curb and find me a new one? Let me know. Thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you soon. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Just get me on my phone or hit me up on my pager. Yep. And I can meet you there. Awesome. Thank you. I want to thank everybody for tuning in and watching the video um, all the way up to the end. This is kind of a silly video of mine. Up. Oh! <laughs> I gotta get a tripod. This is kind of a silly video of mine. Uh, I, I bought this car, I knew from first seeing it that I wasn't gonna chase it around. So I am gonna sell it. It's gonna be a cheap car under two grand. If you wanna buy it, I didn't try to mock the car or beat it up too much, uh, but I just wanted to show you uh, what happens because I've had people ask that question before. What happens to the car that you get that you're disappointed with? Have you ever bought a car that you're disappointed with? I, I mean, I, most of my cars, like I said, I buy sight unseen, so I have had that happen a few times. Majority of the time, I luck out and I'm, I'm buying nice stuff. I know what to look for. This car, sometimes your heart just buys cars and your wallet's not listening, and this is one of those cars. So uh, I am going to hopefully not drop the phone again, and uh, I'm going to list this car for sale locally here. Uh, if somebody wants a cheap ride, it runs and drives good. I'm driving it right now. I'll probably drive it for the next few days because it actually really does run and drive good. There's no, uh, you know, brake pulsation or anything like that. It just, it's a nice beater, I guess. I don't know, pretty beater, pretty car. It needs a little bit of love, whatever. I want to thank everybody for watching my channel. Thank you so much for all the love and support. Uh, just about to hit 25,000 subscribers, which is phenomenal. I never thought that would ever happen. Uh, it gives me the ability to keep doing what I'm doing, chasing down these nice gems. Well, not this one. Uh, chasing down those nice gems. I got some neat cars coming up uh, next week. I have a uh, 2005 Lincoln Town Car. You guys probably saw the preview picture post just a few days ago. Uh, that's going to get listed. That's 32,000 mile one owner Oklahoma car. That's gem. Uh, I got a couple pieces coming up next week. One coming in, uh, but one that I'm going to list. Uh, one of them that I'm going to list that's an oddball, not normally what I, I get. It's a 1998. Whoa, look at that. 58 Cadillac. Oh, my sweet Lord. Be still my heart. Uh, it's a 1998. I got to see if I can get a picture of this thing. A 1998. Oh, look at this car. Look at that thing. And I can't get out into traffic to see it. Uh, all right, sorry about that. I got a little excited. That wasn't actually a 58 Cadillac, but a 57. Nonetheless, a gorgeous car. Uh, but I was just about to say I have a 1998. It should be listed next week. It's a 1998 Chevy Suburban. 
uh, not Chevy Suburban, GMC Suburban. I'm so used to saying that. Uh, GMC Suburban, it's a 1500 series truck, 43,000 original miles on that truck. Really clean piece, did a lot of work to it, brakes, tires, you name it. I've been driving it, I've been kind of holding back because I wanted a Suburban uh, a few months ago that I was gonna buy a 2500 series. That fell through, so I've been kind of using this one and driving it, enjoying it, but it's time to let it get uh, rehomed. So that'll be coming up next week for sale. Uh, and I have on its way right now from California, uh, which I'm super excited to see and get. It's a 1987 Chevy uh, Crew Cab Dually 3500, uh, 56,000 original miles, California truck since new. A really oddball piece. My father had, I think, an 86 Chevy pickup, the square bodies, and I remember them as a kid. And uh, I saw this thing, I'm like, whoa, gotta have that. So not normal uh, Cadillac, Lincoln, Mercury, whatever. Uh, but oop, uh, <laughs> it's still a really nice piece, uh, a specialty piece because it is a specialty car. So I appreciate everybody tuning in. Thanks so much. Uh, I'm gonna wrap this video up. If you are interested in this car, you can give me a call. Uh, like always, my spiel, 978-930-1004. That's my number. You can get me anytime. Uh, Specialty Motor Cars is the website. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, all those places. Uh, Specialty Motor Cars NH. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.